Universal Reality Chapter 2 If there has been a first man, he must have been born without father or mother, which is repugnant to nature. For there could not have been a first egg to give a beginning to birds, or there should have been a first bird which gave a beginning to eggs, for a bird comes from an egg. Aristotle 1. Theories do not solve the human question. The age-old mystery, to which came first, the chicken or the egg, is a logical question to consider as we ponder our existence. More broadly, which came first, the parents or the child? Philosophers and scholars have never been able to conclusively solve this puzzle. Science has attempted to prove that life started not as anything like a chicken or an egg, but as some kind of unknown bacterium. Scientists call their theory evolution. This theory suggests that somehow something similar to either the chicken or the egg came into existence by means of this bacterium going through a lengthy process of adaptation and transformation over millions of years. This theory was later expanded to include the quote-unquote Big Bang Theory. This general accepted theory proposes that the universe started from a single point and expanded from there. In considering both of these theories, especially the quote-unquote Big Bang Theory, many questions remain unanswered. Therefore, they cannot be the real truth. A reasonable explanation cannot be given for how something can start from nothing. If there was a Big Bang, then how did it start? Where did the elements that were necessary to create the quote-unquote Big Bang exist at the time of the explosion? If there was a Big Bang that was responsible for forming the universe, then we are forced to to accept the possibility that another Big Bang might end it. Many other theories have been developed by the human mind in an attempt to arrive at a comfortable balance. We have continually searched for a reasonable conclusion about how we came into existence since the time that we were old enough to consider our individual existence apart from everyone else. We search out any explanation that gives us some semblance of assurance that our life has a valid meaning. This search has led to a wide variety of different speculations. But with each new theory, more questions arise, and in an attempt to answer each new question, another theory is proposed quote-unquote real truth is the final answer. It gives a conclusive and ultimate explanation that requires no further discussion or change. Real truth debunks all ideas and beliefs that are formed through speculation or conjecture devised in the human mind. It ends our search and gives us the comfort we need to be assured that life does indeed have a purposeful meaning. Based on the actuality of real truth, it follows that there must be a conclusive and clear answer to the mystery, which came first, the chicken or the egg? 2. The universe and all things have always existed. The simple answer to the mystery of the quote-unquote chicken and the egg is neither came first. They have both always existed. There has never been a time when either a chicken or an egg could not be found in some part of the infinite universe. Every chicken started as an egg, which was laid by a chicken, which started as an egg, and so on ad infinitum, endlessly. Likewise, the universe has always been the most basic and fundamental components of every piece of organized matter have always been. 
although matter can be found in many different forms, there has never been a time when it, in one of its present living or non-living forms, could not be found somewhere in the universe. Using water as an example of a form of non-living matter, there are places in the universe where it exists as a solid, ice, a liquid, water, or a gas, steam. A simple compound of the known elements, hydrogen and oxygen. There has never been a time when water has not existed. There has never been a time when the known and unknown elements have not been present somewhere in the vast universe. There is no such thing as empty space or quote-unquote nothingness. Where there are no elements, there exists instead all of the components, protons, neutrons, and electrons, from which all elements are composed. 3. Scientific theories confuse more than enlighten. Of course, this quote-unquote new information counters the explanations and theories of science, which have continually failed to lead us to any sensible answer to the question of who we are. Most modern-day scientific theories do not fully answer our questions, nor do they agree with our common sense. Even the power of human imagination has a very difficult time providing a reasonable answer to this question of the chicken and the egg. 4. Real truth often contradicts current knowledge. Real truth does not leave any unanswered questions. To be accepted as the final and unquestionable authoritative answer, real truth must be easily understood by everyone and leave none of us with a follow-up question to consider. And most importantly, we must feel comfortable with the answer. The difference between real truth and accepted knowledge is that the latter is what we have been taught to accept as truth, i.e. the earth is flat, and the former is how things really are, the earth is round. Although some of us would like to think of ourselves as more knowledgeable than the average person, thus maintaining a claim of superior intelligence over others. True reality supports the fact that all of our modern knowledge will one day be replaced with completely different knowledge. The smartest and most intelligent of today will be the quote-unquote cavemen of tomorrow. Nothing, therefore, that we suppose we know today is actually real truth. This quote-unquote evolution of knowledge will continue until all of the questions and quote-unquote missing links are discovered. Each real truth discovered will not necessarily support the current knowledge, but it will make complete sense and leave no room for questions. And it will never change. 5. The universe having always existed makes sense. Some speculate that a so-called quote-unquote explosion or quote-unquote expansion created the galaxies of the universe with a quote-unquote Big Bang, which was caused by certain elements reacting with others. If this were the case, then the elements that created the explosion existed before the Big Bang. Therefore, the explosion could not have created them. If elements make up the universe, and these same elements existed before the universe was created, then they must have been present in some sort of environment in order for them to interact and explode or expand to create a universe. In other words, if a Big Bang created all the elements of the universe, then what created the quote-unquote bang? The whole theory leads to a mass of confusion. It just doesn't make sense, and it never will. Few of us are comfortable with this conclusion of how we came to be. 
In contrast, the idea that the universe has always been, and that the organization of matter into new living and non-living substances is and always has been going on, makes perfect sense. The proposition supports some scientific conclusions that most elements, the matter that makes up all substances, cannot be created or destroyed. Advancements in science and understanding, however, prove that elements can be destroyed and changed because they are made up of other subparticles. Therefore, it is these quote-unquote subparticles that cannot be destroyed and have always existed in their natural form in the universe. Throughout this book, these quote-unquote subparticles that cannot be destroyed will be referred to as quote-unquote protons, neutrons, and electrons. 6. The creation of new galaxies expands the universe. One thing current scientists have gotten right is that the universe seems to be expanding. And to a scientific mind, this gives credence to the theory that it is expanding away from the point of the quote-unquote Big Bang. As new galaxies with solar and planetary systems are created in the endless dark matter of space, where none were found before, it would appear as if the universe is continually expanding. It also appears, from our earthly vantage point, that some galaxies are colliding with others. However, it is the quote-unquote vantage point from which we make our observations that creates the false perceptions of what is actually going on in the universe. It isn't hard to comprehend a universe that has no boundaries, borders, or limitations of space, and which appears to expand as new galaxies and solar systems are created. The outside universe, apart from this Earth, would not exist if we could not observe matter from our quote-unquote vantage point. If there were no lights in outer space, then it would appear that nothing else exists, quote-unquote, out there, except for us. Science has been very sloppy in proposing theories of truth that are based on its limited observational vantage point, especially when we consider that it has only been a relatively very short time period in which humans have been observing the expanse of space, speculating on what all those lights actually are. If we observe that the lights found in space change over time by increasing in number and intensity, for example, we would detect an expansion of observable matter. In other words, our universe would appear as if it is expanding. It has always been this way, and will continually be this way forever. It is what we call, quote, universal infinite, unquote. 7. Accepting, quote, unquote, universal infinite answers who we are. The hardest thing for the human mind to conceive, because the mind currently exists on a plane of thought, that begins with birth and ends with death, is that everything has always existed in one form or another. Although it makes sense, and even though it would answer many of the mysteries humans cannot solve with their limited view of the universe, it still remains a premise that is not easily comprehended. The idea that human beings have always existed contradicts the known fact that each of us, as a mortal individual upon this earth, had a beginning. To our finite minds, it is impossible that we could have existed forever, and if we have not, then how could it be that other human beings have existed forever? 
in developing a correct understanding of who we are, we need to consider everything that we currently know about ourself. None of us can remember a time when we did not exist. Because of this, it is easier to accept the fact that we might have existed forever. Even though the human mind cannot comprehend universal infinite in this manner, it does not necessarily change the fact that it is true reality. Furthermore, if we are willing to accept as real truth that everything has always existed, we will place ourselves in a better position to fully comprehend who we are and answer many other questions about our existence. 8. Intelligent reasoning supports non-Earth life. If water, the basis for most forms of life, has always been, though in different forms throughout the universe, then it should make reasonable sense that human beings, another form of living matter, have always been, and can also be found in different stages of development in all parts of the universe. Let's hypothetically suppose that, theoretically and statistically, we randomly evolved from bacteria. If this is the real truth, then it is probable and possible that the same thing could happen and has, al and has happened already in other parts of the vast universe. To say it couldn't happen anywhere else would be intelligently unreasonable and irresponsible. Our own existence proves its probability. 9. Humans are the highest life form in the universe. In order to come to a complete understanding of who we are and why we exist, we must be willing to accept the following. First, human beings are the greatest and most significant life form, or any other compilation of matter, in the universe. Second, all human beings, no matter in what stage of their development they are found throughout the universe, are indisputably equal in their potential to optimize their existence as free-willed life forms. It is a false idea that higher forms of intelligent life above humans exist in the universe. Ideas such as quote-unquote aliens, science fiction quote-unquote creatures, or non-human monsters or machines will be expelled from our thinking once we learn more about how our creative thinking process and imagination work. For now, we must consider what we know to be the real truth by being honest about what is happening upon this earth. Humans are indeed the most intelligent and complicated life form in existence here. There are no other forms of life that are comparably close in intelligence, or better, that have the same potential to optimize their existence as human beings. 10. Advanced humans exist throughout the universe. If humans have always existed, it would logically follow that advanced societies of human beings also exist and can be found throughout the universe in infinite numbers. How far do human beings need to advance until they know all there is to know? How long before we know about every atom that makes up every element, that makes up every molecule, that makes up every cell, that makes up every part of every living and non-living particle of matter that exists and has always existed in the universe? Regardless of how long we think it would take, only human beings and no other life forms will ever attain a complete knowledge of the source 
of all matter. Furthermore, human beings are the only life form that seems to care about attaining this knowledge. There are human beings who have this knowledge and understand it as a real truth. Along with this knowledge, they have the capability, the power and ability of using it to do whatever they desire. Consequently, human beings control every aspect of the universe. The universe exists exclusively for human beings and supports the desire of human beings to optimize, make the best of, their existence. 11. Advanced humans create matter for enjoyment. What is it that highly advanced humans who know it all, have experienced it all, and have the power to do it all, would want to do? It would seem that in such a state of existence, they would find themselves quite bored with their lives. What more could they experience than what they already have? If they already know how all matter is going to act or react in any given circumstance, what else is there to stifle their monotony and boredom? If, on the other hand, they organize matter in such a way that they did not know, even with their infinite intelligence, how it was going to act or react, they would succeed in creating for themselves an interesting exciting, and often entertaining diversion, somewhat akin to our current obsession and enjoyment in watching a quote-unquote hidden camera or home video show where we are surprised at what humans do. In order to accomplish this, these advanced beings would have to organize matter in such a way that the creation could have quote-unquote free will with the same ability to act and react to its environment as they do. In providing this opportunity to newly created human beings like themselves, they would be successful at enhancing their own enjoyment and happiness, thus optimizing their own existence. 12. Human beings are the only free-willed life form. These highly advanced human quote-unquote scientists, using the term loosely, organize matter into other beings like themselves and allow their creations to have free will. Quote-unquote free will is the motivational force for action of all human beings who do not have pre-programmed instinctual behaviors. Those with free will have the power to make choices that are unconstrained by external forces. Every other living organism is pre-programmed with instinctual instructions within its makeup, which information determines its actions and reactions to its environment. In other words, advanced human beings program or command a plant or animal to do whatever they expect of it without the ability for it to respond with free will. Upon pre-programming matter in this way, a creator could certainly become bored by just watching the animals and plants as their actions would always have the same outcome in similar environments and situations. However, this is not the case with other human, free-willed creations. Advanced humans create galaxies and solar systems for these newly created free-willed organisms, i.e. humans, patterned after the environments in which humans have always existed forever throughout the universe. These quote-unquote environments are the worlds provided for the human beings to optimize their existence, i.e., to experience continual happiness. Most life forms can be categorized and placed into two kingdoms of quote-unquote plants and quote-unquote animals. Human life, however, 
belongs in a completely different category all its own. Humans have the ability to act according to their own will without being controlled by perfunctory instincts. This ability results in humans having the most advantages of any life form in the universe. 13. Free will allows for independent choices. The human being is designed by advanced creators to do pretty much what it wants to do. Because it cannot be programmed by any source other than itself, it becomes a uniquely individual, free-willed life form. There are no others like it anywhere in the universe. This is what separates the human being from all other forms of life. Newly created humans, therefore, are not pre-programmed in any way. They are allowed the same abilities and potential possessed by their more advanced creators, parents. Although our current imperfect human bodies have natural instinctual drives to survive and reproduce, we have the power to control these instincts and choose what each of us wants to do with our own existence. We can choose to eat or not to eat, even until our body grows to excess or dies of malnutrition. We can choose to have sex or not. We can control the production of offspring that the sexual act produces through advanced birth control techniques. In fact, our desire for sex has little to do with creating life, but all to do with satisfying the needs of our physical body. And there is no other life form that even comes close to enjoying the effects of sexuality in the same way that a human does. No other life form can consciously make these kinds of choices. But because of our unique ability to make these choices, what we decide to do with our free will is completely unknown, even by our creators, until we do it. 14. Free-willed individuality entertains our creators. In our own lives, we are usually surprised and entertained by watching little children play. We enjoy watching them use their newfound freedom of movement and choice to experience new things and situations. Even advanced human parents who have been around forever will never become bored from observing the antics demonstrated by human free will and the situations into which we, as their children, place ourselves. With our current technology, we can secretly videotape the actions and reactions of human nature and spend endless hours watching the unknown results of free-willed behavior. With much more advanced technology, we will one day be able to watch the behavior of other humans on other planets in other solar systems and be entertained forever by observing their interactions with different environments and situations. Likewise, one day, with the same advanced technology, we will be able to observe our own past actions and humor ourselves at our own antics performed when we did not know that we were actually being recorded. It is a wonderful experience of joy and happiness for advanced creators to give new human beings the potential to live as they once lived and become as they are now and watch the quote-unquote new humans progress to where they have. This potential does not necessarily mean that most of us will become like our advanced parents slash creators, but rather that we will have the ability to be completely content with whomever we choose to be through the use of our unconditional free will. 15. We need new experiences to individualize. No matter in what stage of development humans are found throughout the universe, 
they will always be the only quote-unquote free-willed life forms that ever exist. And as unique and as different as we are from any other life form, we can only be satisfied and find happiness by participating in never-ending new experiences. We must be allowed to fully participate and take advantage of these new experiences with our exclusive free will in order for us to grow, individualize, and find joy in our existence. There are worlds without end in the universe where the human experience is taking place at different stages of development and advancement. In each of these stages, human beings are taking advantage of their existence and optimizing their life to support their unique individuality. The culmination of all experience is to bring happiness to the individual. Although the specific purpose here on Earth seems to be the opposite of that. This will be explained later. This is why we exist. 16. Our current experience causes us confusion. The concept of universal infinite, again, that everything has always existed in one form or another, is hard for us to accept. This is because we have been conditioned to accept, as a consequence of our current existence, the conclusive fact that we were born and that we will die. This part of real truth leads many of us to question the proposed idea that humans have always existed. Being born appears to have started our existence, and death seems to end it. So the idea that everything has always existed though it can make sense of many things, still leaves us perplexed as we are unable to fully comprehend it and find comfort with it. Our limited existence of having only one lifetime upon this planet would be sufficient if it were possible to learn all we need to know about who we are during the very short seven or so decades that we are alive in a mortal body. But that is not possible, and those who die at a young age would have even less time to learn about themselves. Therefore, these facts point us to the reality that we have all experienced many lives upon this earth, each one putting us in a position to optimize our individual existence. 17. Each new life experience helps us individualize. The law of universal infinite does not negate the fact that each of us had a beginning as a human, but also supports the reality that others like us have always existed. We did have a beginning, but we will have no end. If this is the case, and we know we are going to die and discontinue being the person we are recognized as while living in mortality, then who we are cannot be the part of us that dies. If we are not the part of us that dies, then we are not the part that was born either. Therefore, we are not just our body, or better, our current mortal body is not who we really are. All of this might not make sense right now, but it soon will as the reader continues to learn real truths that have never been considered before. Summary Matter has always existed and cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, it will always exist in universal infinite. Human beings as organized life forms composed of matter are the most advanced life forms found in the universe and have always existed and always will. 
human societies on worlds like our planet Earth have always existed and always will. Humans exist in these societies in different stages of development. The most advanced humans know all real truth and find joy in their existence by organizing matter, or better, creating other humans that have the power of free will to act and react without pre-programming. These advanced humans create environments where other, quote-unquote, less advanced people, such as ourselves, can learn to enjoy their humanity through the experience of many mortalities. The singular uniqueness of the free will provided to human beings alone and to no other life forms allows us to develop into individuals with our own sense of self apart from everyone else. We will eventually choose what will make us happy and ultimately we will always be happy. This is the reality of Universal Infinite.